Hi folks, five different types of plastic. Let's talk about how we approach a new material. Speeds and feeds, tooling, just general approach, how you get smart and get confident on making that cut. Let's take a real quick look at the Fusion 360 CAD and CAM. We're gonna make some test cuts, including a set of soft jaws to hold these in the second op. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Fees and feeds. All right, new material. Folks, Google is your friend. You need to learn to help yourself. A simple search, machining polypropylene, takes us to a practical machinist forum. And don't get too sucked in. There's a bajillion opinions out there. And as much as I'm advocating the internet, I will also tell you, uh, you can't take it all as as pure fact and truth and the only way out because lots of people have opinions and thread forms tend to get off topic pretty quickly. But nevertheless, it's a good thing. What I want you to also know is you need to be smart about your searches and link in the video description to this Google support page, which is search term modifiers. In other words, how to get better Google searches. If I'm typing machining plastic, for example, and then let's say I start getting a bunch of results on injection molding, type in minus injection. You can do a lot of modifiers. It's more than just this minus one. Again, click on that link in the video description to read about combining perfect statements or quotes or ors or um, searching for ranges of things. Really, really important thing to do. The general rule with plastics, though, is you need to avoid melting them, and you need to have a sharp tool. I usually use, and link in the video description to download this Excel sheet, it's a quarter inch tool, we'll do three flutes, and I wanna move pretty quick, 0.00, .00 say four thousandths per tooth and 10,000 RPMs on my 440, 120 inches a minute. That's just literally what I was thinking because again, I don't want to do anything that's gonna cause rubbing or burnishing because it's going to melt that plastic. Let's pop into G Wizard, which is great again for when you have mystery materials. If I click on plastics and then check this little more out, you wouldn't know it, but that more lets you actually go through and pick specific materials, like in this case, polypropylene. Quarter inch end mill, three flutes, quarter inch depth of cut, 20% uh, width of cut, 0.05. Take a look. They're telling me to go 10,000 RPMs. In other words, use every RPM you've got and 135 inches a minute. That's pretty darn close to what I came up with. That's another confidence booster. That tells me I'm in the right ballpark. We're lucky here. We've got a test material block that we're gonna take a real quick test cut on. Let's do that. 2D adaptive strategy, 10,000 RPMs. We'll go the full 135 inches a minute. That's actually also all of the RP, uh, feed rate I've got on the 440 and 20% width of cut. We'll leave nothing on the floor, no axial stock to leave. We'll leave 10 thou on the wall. You gotta be a little careful here because again, you, uh, you can do that, but you wanna make sure when you clean it up, you're going just as fast because I don't want to rub. On the flip side, remember, adaptive strategies in Fusion 360 are never finishing strategies. So same thing, 10,000 RPMs, 135 inches a minute. Little trick to avoid leaving that tooling mark along the floor. We're using the same tool here, so it's not as much of an issue, but sometimes if you've mismeasured a tool by just a few tenths, what I'll do is under stock to leave, I'll say, half a thousandth axial stock to leave and that'll keep that tool off the floor uh, and for most applications won't cause any problems with the tolerances so let's go run this block real quick and just see what we get that's awesome look at that so we're making a real chip that's what's used and yeah, we're going fast, but there's no horsepower requirements to this. Now, I think this is gonna be the easiest of the plastics. Some of these other plastics have glass in them, which for me is usually like a don't do it. Uh, you can, really hard on your tooling. Glass will just wear your tooling out. Uh, this should be the cleanup pass here. I gotta fix that post-processor. It turns the spindle off, even when it's the same tool, which is silly. But look at, this looks great, awesome. We Oh yeah. Great, you can't come close to feeling any sort of a line where we kept the 2D contour half a thousandth high and you avoid 
um, seen a, a, a gouge or trough around it. And if, we, and if we look, cut quality is great. Let's load up the uh, other materials here, rock and roll. Here is our test bar. I think these are for tensile strength tests. Adaptive, it's the exact same recipe. 10,000 RPMs, 135 inches a minute, 20% with the cut, and then our contour clean up. Actually, you know what? One thing we will do, I'm gonna have that contour lead in and out right on the corner point, which is gonna minimize any mark of the linking move. Edit, linking, entry positions. Just click that little point. Click OK and then take a look. You'll get a lead in, lead out. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but it actually is right on. Oh, you know what? <laughs> this is one of those rare examples. Edit, passes, where I'll probably turn off finishing overlap. Normally that blends in your line by going be uh, starting before and, and ending after your linking move or your lead in point here. I want it to happen right on that corner. Boom. Perfect. Actually... I wonder why it's not right on the corner. I want it to be kind of right out here. Hmm. Turn off. It m probably is okay because it's tangential to the tool right there. Let's, uh, we'll have to see. I still want it to have a slight lead in though. Okay, this might do the same thing. Simulate. Check this little show points. Get rid of our, our, our tool transparent and click this little point right here. And you can see it actually should roll in right on the edge. We'll see when we make our part. Let's rock and roll. So this is labeled polypropylene and it should be the same. I don't have any reason to think it's different, but make no assumptions. It's certainly a different color, which means it's a different batch. And again, I, I don't mean to hype overreact. Well, that's awesome. Probably okay. And actually, yeah, it looks fine. But you just gotta, one thing I'm learning uh, as I grow as a machinist is make no assumptions. Material can be, can be mislabeled. It can be, have hard, like steels can have hard spots or soft spots or castings can be peculiar, like stuff happens. Uh, don't just make assumptions and assume everything is correct. Another thing, use a new tool. Here I'm using a new tool because I don't want any complications of having used an, an old tool by accident. The other thing is I want a sharp tool and I know a new tool is gonna be sharp tool. That was quick, wow. And then finally, I'm learning as well not to mix tools between materials. So for example, if I have an end mill that I use for stainless, I try not to use it in mild steel. And likewise, I don't want to use uh, a tool that has a bunch of a micro buildup from aluminum on it when I'm trying to do something like cutting plastic. If you have really high RPM routers, we'll talk at the end about different tooling options. This looks great though. All right, now we need to flip it and deck it. Let's go make some, whip up some CAD CAM for the soft jaws. And at the end of the video, after we deck this, we'll machine the other four types of plastics. Let's bang out some soft jaws. Hop back into model. Right click, new component. Soft jaws. I am going to hit R for rectangle. And what plane? This plane right here will work. Mm -hmm. So the guys I've got are four by one. Click on the point, and I want to put a point along right there. See how it snaps to the center? And then I'm going to do this L for line. I'm going to snap a line between here. Click on it once to highlight it. See this here, toggle normal construction. Put a point on it. Yes, there may be faster ways to do this, but I like being methodical and it's pretty quick when I'm moving at normal John speed, trying to slow down for the videos. Horizontal vertical, 
click here, Ooh, click here, wrong way, no big deal, hit on Control Z to undo it, drag it over so it's a little bit closer, horizontal, vertical, I like it, that's lined up, so basically we centered our part in our soft jaw. Again, normally much quicker, 0.2 inches, 2.5, nope, 0.2, yeah, it's good enough, uh, yeah. E for extrude, watch this, so easy. Click this, go down. I don't really care how much down I go. E for extrude, oops, nothing to click on. Cancel. Expand my soft job. Expand my sketch, turn that sketch on. E for extrude, that's weird. Normally it uh, projects it on, no big deal. Right click, edit sketch, P for project, watch this. Click this shape and it projected the profile of that part onto that plane. Click OK, stop sketch, E for extrude, boom, we'll come up 0.25. That's gonna give me a good amount of work holding. Important that it's a join operation. This is what it should default to. It looks like it's a separate thing. That's actually just the sketch kind of poking through because our sketch that we created to make the soft jaw is kind of in the middle of the soft jaw. No big deal. Turn off my part just to take a look at that soft jaw. Looks beautiful, and that curvature should give it plenty good of good locating material. Even though we really aren't on the flat spot anywhere, I think these ought to work. Now, how do you create the opposite soft jaw? Create pattern, circular pattern, but we're not going in a circle. Just everybody calm down. We do happen to have an origin through our center here, so pattern type is a component. Click soft jaw. What's our axis? It is that center axis. I don't want three, just two. You could do a mirror pattern as well. Basically the same thing. For some reason, sometimes I like the circular pattern a little bit better. So now we've got the two components. Here's the thing. We don't even need the second one because when we go back into cam, we're going to do a new setup. Body is not two bodies, so delete that with a little X. Just pick my soft jaw. Stock, I've got stock errors, ignore that. Fixed size box, four by one, great. I can turn my, uh, see up here, expand that and turn my part off so we're not looking at it. Basically, I just need to get rid of this little area here. You uh, will prefer to have the origin be, we'll do it this side here. Click OK. Now, you have to use templates. Card here to a video on creating templates. Right click, create from template. Where'd they go? They just moved templates on me. <laughs> uh, how does this work now? They literally just updated to cloud templates. So sorry, that's why I had to restart it. Right click, create from template, 440 soft jaw. Expand the little triangle. I wish it auto expanded and boom, everything's right there that I need. 2D adaptive, all I've got to do is pick that edge. Click OK. 2D contour, same thing. Click OK and then 2D chamfer, one, Two. Now, that was not what I wanted. Delete. Hold down the Alt key. That lets you pick individual chains. Actually, here, uh, here I'll hold down the Alt key. Here, it's going to be faster than picking, well, six one half dozen the other. I'll pick the whole thing. Yeah, I'll do the Alt key. Sorry. One, two, three, four. You could pick the whole thing and then deselect what you don't want as well. Five. Okay, and we're done. Soft jaw madness. Oh, now look, it's not giving me a chamfer along that edge. I bet you I need to increase my chamfer tip offset. So what, what does that mean? Take a look. If I go into simulate and I click on the point here, you can see I need to offset the chamfer tool more to cut more with this high end of the shoulder to keep the solid, the shank of the tool away from our solid model up here. That'll let me chamfer that whole edge. So 
chamfer tip offset, let's say 0.09. Did that get it? Yep, that got it. Take a look. Boom, just like that. Just, just the slightest edge break and the solid shank of the tool stays away from our part. I almost forgot. Now how do you machine the other side? Click all three. Right click. Add to new pattern. What kind of pattern is it? Circular axis, the same one. Just two of them. Order by tool, which is fine. And then boom, take a look. We have our matching soft jaws. I like it. Let's go make some soft jaws. Soft jaws. These are the guys we want. Soft jaws are in. We need to space them 0.4 inches apart. That's where gauge blocks come in handy. Worst case, if you don't have a set of gauge blocks, which you should, uh, you can actually use drills. Uh, you won't have a 0.4 inch drill, but as an example, we could get a X or Y drill are both within a few thousands. P frankly, plenty good. Actually here it really wouldn't matter with the soft jaws, It'd be fine. Now, yes, you can criticize me because our X, Y, zero, is right here on the moving jaw, not a big deal. Different end mill, it's the same part number, but this is one that we use to cut aluminum. I'm not gonna mess up my good plastic one. I wanna keep it sharp and free of aluminum. By the way, link in the video description, I highly recommend Everybody pick up one of these because they're like five bucks and it is a 45X loop. But it is an incredible way to get an up close look at your tool, which is great. You can see if there's a little chip, you can see if there's buildup, you can see if there's some rippling along the edges. These things are, I'd say worth their weight in gold, but they're so cheap, I don't know what the better analogy is. Not a bad looking set of soft jaws, if I do say so myself. Love having machine chamfers. Oh my God, it's so nice. All right, let's see how she fits. Awesome, now there is a little bit of ability to slide this thing left to right, but let's see as we gently close up our soft jaws. By the way, if you're interested in machine, Fusion 360, CAD cam, soft jaws, click here to a card, we offer hands-on training classes where we go through, oh yeah, that's tightening up great. We go through making soft jaws, making parts, operating the CNC machines, hands-on class. Again, it, card here or video description link. I like it. Let's rock and roll. Oh my God. <laughs> Operator error. I uh, forgot to change classic mistake. I forgot that we're using two different Tool 31s. This is the clean, brand new, plastic only one, which has a slightly different height than the one we just used to cut our soft jaw. So, oops, that's why we cut into the soft jaw there. Um, embarrassing, but uh, I will not cut this out of the video and hide my mistake. Sorry though. 440 still did great. <laughs> It's like a Smurf blue. Other than having the wrong part thickness, it doesn't really hurt anything. We can still use the soft gels for the other plastics. And there is our tensile strength test bar. At least I think that's what it's for. Voila. 
All right, let's cut up the rest of these uh, plastics. I think that some of these are not going to go well. We just did this one. These two of these, I think, have glass in them, which might be pretty gnarly. We'll see. Let's try this Riddell 5500. Never heard of it. Same recipe. I'm not, so we're clear, taking the time to research this stuff. We're hearing a little bit of chatter out at the end, so that could be solved by not using a four inch vise, you know, using a five or six inch vise. Uh, some of this stuff that has plastic on it could wear out tools pretty quickly. And again, you really should research this stuff. Call up the plastics company, call up the tooling supplier. A lot of times uh, there's some good specialty tooling like from a company called Onstrud. Uh, and the one I've got is from Amana, which is tools today. But these really, really uh, sharply ground positive rake, I believe positive, carbide or high speed steel single fluters. That looked great though. Other than some chatter, you don't even really see it though on the ends. That machined quite well. So here is some polycarbonate. Let's try it. I was gonna peel the uh, label off, but who cares? Just leave it on. Not gonna hurt anything. Well, I'm not. Cr oh yeah, perfect. I was saying, I'm not crazy about it being in the clamping zone. Boom. So for you guys that might be doing this on a router style machine where you might have a 20 or 30,000 RPM spindle, the problem is you're not gonna be able to go fast enough accurately. You, know, you can't go three or four or 500 inches a minute to cut this stuff with a multi-flute end mill. That's where those single insert cutters can be great, along with the fact that they've got geometry that is more specialty defined. You know, I'm using a Lakeshore carbide end mill that really is meant to cut aluminum. My understanding is it's generally a myth that you can get high-speed steel, or it's a myth that carbide is duller than high-speed steel because there have been some advancements in micrograin structures of carbide. Now that's not to say that all carbide is, isn't the same, and that's not to say that there isn't a reason, gosh, this is going great, that you shouldn't consider high-speed steel in certain applications. That looked, that machine beautifully. Look at that. That's great. Tempelux. Again, never heard of it. Doesn't mean a thing though. So yeah, as a general rule, there's no high speed steel in our shop anymore. Carbide is just so much stiffer. Uh, and that to me is generally really important. The exception might be a, a custom form tool that's high speed steel. And then again, yes, if, it, if you speak to a you know plastics specific company, maybe that's uh, yeah, they may recommend a tool, and that's that's okay. God, this is cutting great. The last piece that we're about to cut after this is the same thing, but it's got some glass in it. I'm very curious to see how that runs. <laughs> we're making a, it's, I'll just show you guys the, well, you can see in the GoPro a little bit, like the <laughs> shop is a mess. It's almost as bad as the pumpkin days. It's funny, we're still getting some comments on that pumpkin video of people that are upset that they don't seem to understand that it was a joke. So whatever Temple X is, uh, it was no match for this. G like phenomenal sidewall quality. You're not seeing, you know, a lot of times what you'll see with plastics is it'll melt or tear, and that's no problem here. All right, the last one. Will this be our uh, Achilles heel? Temple X 20% glass. So far the biggest goof in this whole video was when I didn't uh, update my correct tool number 31 height, which is proof that CNC machines don't crash. Operators crash them. Is that parallel? Yeah, it's, it's, it's seated well enough. Here we go. My guess is that the glass will be a problem, not at first, but over time. You'll see that glass is really hard on tooling. It'll dull it, which is where you will start to see service finish problems, especially with aluminum or uh, plastic. And you gotta be really careful. I don't cut glass stuff in my machine. So what do I mean by that? Right, I won't cut G10, I won't cut fiberglass, I won't cut carbon fiber, but that's not glass. That, that just has to do with dust or graphite jobs. And the guys that do that all stuff all the time usually have either exhaust systems or coolant filter systems, just specialized stuff. This is going great. This is awesome. Wow. Shout out to a Lakeshore Carbide. I mean, again, having a good quality end mill here is, is, is a huge part of that. 
success. And I'll end with just a quick example. Here is one of those single flutes. This is from Tools Today or Amana Tool. And they are beautiful tools. But here's the thing, this one for me at 10,000 RPMs, I would, because it's only one flute, I'd run it a third the speed to get the same chip load. So I'm happy with this one for what we're doing here. Hope you guys enjoyed folks. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next Wednesday.